What is up everyone, Rare here, and welcome to the video. Today we're going to be going over some hints in order to help you guys improve your aim. Now, let it be known that while this video was made in order to help you guys out and point you guys in the right direction, it is by no means the end all and be all of good aim. Rather, in general, as long as you keep up a constant mentality to improve and act upon that mentality, you will get better. Simply watching this video, or any video in fact, would not help you unless you actually put what you learn into practice. That being said, it's always a good idea to watch the pro players that play in tournaments as it might give you an idea of what you may need to improve on. So, to start off, when it comes to getting better aim, the base of it all starts with your sensitivity, not your mouse. I always hear the argument that a $100 mouse is needed to have great aim, but that simply is not true. When it comes down to it, as long as you have a decent mount, like this Dell mouse that I got off Amazon for $15, you'll be fine. The same also goes for your keyboard. Here you see a Logitech keyboard that I got for $15 off Amazon, and no, I wasn't sponsored by Amazon, but I've been using these devices for 5 years now and I have never had a problem with them. Having better equipment is cool but by no means necessary. Rather, the only requirement for a mouse and keyboard is that they're wired and they're not wireless, as wireless tends to fail every so often. Starting off when picking your sensitivity, the first thing to keep in mind is to not constantly change the values you are using. Whether you are using a high or low sensitivity, the last thing you should be doing is adjusting it while you play. The key to getting better aim is to practice, muscle memory, and the constant reminder in the back of your head to get better. When it comes down to the actual values that you use for your sensitivity, generally, most people would agree that a lower sensitivity is better. What this means is, if you are capable of performing a 360 on the screen by just flicking your wrist, then your sensitivity is probably too high. However, at the same time, you don't want to set the sensitivity too low that you need to move your mouse across your entire table in order to perform a 360. Instead, what you should be doing when picking a sensitivity is to make it sure that it fits the amount of space that you have in order to move your mouse. For example, on my table, I have about 10 inches to move my mouse back and forth. So I adjust the values in a way that allows me to perform a 360 after moving 5 inches. Now, for people with bigger tables, that's a pretty high sensitivity. However, for me, it fits the amount of space that I have on my table, and I have gotten used to that sensitivity over time. The next thing you should be doing after you have set the values for your sensitivity, depending on whatever game you are playing, is to practice with that sensitivity. Unless you actually start playing, you won't be improving your aim. Which is why I said that even though you watch this video, it's not going to automatically improve your accuracy. At first, it might seem like a struggle with you missing every single shot using the new sensitivity. However, eventually your body will adapt and your muscle will remember the correct movement. It's actually quite similar to riding a bike. It's hard at first, but over time your body will learn and after a while you will never forget how to aim. Now, for people who play a lot of different first-person shooter games, a good website to visit is actually mountsensitivity.com. This website allows you to find and compare settings so that you will have the same sensitivity values across a list of many first-person shooter games, allowing you to not have to worry about all the different ways that a developer might build their game. Instead, simply have to plug in some numbers such as your DPI and the settings that you want to convert and get the settings that you need for that new game that you are playing. Now, besides sensitivity that you will be using for your mouse, another factor you need to keep in mind is FOV, or field of view. Now, when it comes down to field of view, the basic rule to remember is that a high field of view makes targets smaller while improving your situational awareness. On the other hand, a smaller field of view will make targets bigger, but at the same time reduces your situational awareness. Generally, you want to have a higher field of view, not so high that you can't see the target, but at a point where the targets are still relatively small. It is at a point where over time you'll be getting better at aiming for those precise shots. With a lower photo view, you'll find that you won't be improving as much or as fast because with a bigger target, there's more space for error, which might not seem like a bad thing. However, with more space for error, over time, you'll just get comfortable with hitting the target and you'll stop improving. As a result, when you're trying to get better or trying to get more accurate, you generally want to set the field of view higher rather than lower. 
Lastly, the key to actually getting better and improving your aim is, believe it or not, shooting and missing as many times as possible. Take any shot that you can, even if you think you're not going to hit the target because it is only through mistakes that people learn. And that's pretty much about it. Other videos of this nature will actually go on and talk about the hand techniques of holding your mouse, such as the palm versus the claw, the DPI value of the mouse, the pulling rate, the laser versus optical sensor, etc. And to be completely honest here, 80% of that is bullshit. All right. First off, hold the mouse in the way that you find the most comfortable. Don't force yourself to hold a mouse a particular way just because someone told you to. Next up, DPI. Honestly, as long as you have a mouse capable of hitting at least 400 DPI, you will be fine. You don't need a mouse with over 3000 DPI. Anything above that is pretty much overkill. Then you got laser and optical sensors. Honestly, it doesn't matter whether the mouse has a laser or optical sensor because both of them work pretty much exactly the same. Well, not in a sense in technicality, but they perform quite similarly to each other. And honestly, if one was better than the other, you wouldn't really notice the difference. What is actually important is your sensitivity settings, your frames per second, your field of view, and lastly, are you actually making a constant effort to get better at the game by actually playing it instead of watching videos like this one? Anywho, I hope this video was at least helpful or at least entertaining. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, and as always, remember to be considerate and exit through the back door.